Lagos, Nigeria's most cosmopolitan urban setting, is practically sitting on edge ahead of this Saturday's governorship election. That situation being the product of ethnic-based rabble-rousing, which has gone up a decibel or two since results of the February 25th presidential election, produced a seismic shift in the polit political configuration of the state. With governorship elections due in the next three days, there is palpable tension across the city, especially regarding to what extent the political class is willing to let peace reign in the state, and most importantly, whether or not the country's election management body would be ready to create the conditions for a free, fair and transparent process. Lawyer and civil rights activist Dele Farutimi joins us now to have a conversation on this. So good to have you join us on Newsday. Thanks for coming on the program. Thank you very much for having me. Well, let's talk about the ethnic tension and, shall I say, tribal politics that we've been witnessing, not even just in Lagos State, but in the whole of Nigeria. What would you say is responsible for it? Desperation. Pure desperation. Um... What you see happening, I can speak to Lagos State, it's pretty difficult for me to speak to places where I don't live and I have very little by way of experience, but I can speak plainly to Lagos State. The seed for what is happening in Lagos State today was effectively laid with the fraudulent presidential election. And I say fraudulent because there is sufficient basis upon which to make that claim. But more importantly, the figures that were released in Lagos State as the presidential election result were already doctored before they were released. It has no basis in reality. Yes, Labour Party won. Do you have but, any evidence? Oh, yes. That? There, is, there is more than sufficient evidence. Where INEC has become completely unreliable in terms of declaration of result, I will not even rely on the result that we have in our situation room. If I go by what PDP, released in the public space is more than sufficient. PDP said Peter Obi and Labour Party had over 900,000 votes in Lagos State. They had a little over 100,000 and APC had the same. The truth of the matter is that Bola Ahmed Timubu was roundly rejected in Lagos State. It wasn't just the Igbos. It wasn't about the Igbos rejecting him. He was rejected across the length and breadth of Lagos State because it was a referendum on his 24 years rule and hegemony in the state. So when you now heard the INEC people announcing a result that was supposedly so close with such depressed voters number, I remember that I was on a rise maybe a couple of days after that result was released. And I said at the time very clearly that this result is not reflective of what happened. At my polling booth, they were counting votes up until 1.43 a.m. in the morning. My wife did not vote until around 8.30 in the evening. And so the same happened across the length and breadth of Lagos, despite the best effort of those who were bent on disrupting the elections. So when they brought out the figure, I said immediately that, one, it was not as close as they would like to pretend that it was. It wasn't close. It was a whitewash. However, in order to validate the lies that they have to tell and the tribal hatred that they are staring up, they had to portray a close election so that the script that they have already written for this Saturday's election might be legitimized in all the nonsense they are doing. So one, number one, we must be clear about something. The first duty of a state is the protection of citizens. When you have a situation where citizens are being attacked and people are being singled out for attack, you had the one in the jail, Dodo, one Bale in the jail, Dodo, or KBAC in the jail, Dodo, suddenly remembering that he wants to worship Oro and is declaring Oro during the period when people should be out. Well, well I think we've uh, had a clarification on that. He said the Oro rights will go up until Friday. Yeah, let me, if you have had clarification Saturday. on that, there was another one in social media today, some bearded clown talking about another Oro again. Yeah. Another, yet this was the same person that was caught on camera during the presidential poll. So you have a situation where you can speak about the political class in a situation where you have a political class. What we are dealing with is a criminal class that is determined to hold the people down by force of harms or whatever it takes. They are making this about tribe because there is no record to place before the people. We've had 24 years. 24 years. My people have a proverb. They say, Yato Shomolo Gwondu, Yato Jomolo Gwondu, Tisha Omo Bakpaomo, 
Oh, yeah, good day, Lenny or more. Okay. Well, ah. we are going to have to temper our language a bit. No, I'll be, no, 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 let's temper our language a bit. No, 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 don't national, worry. National television, okay, so let, we have to be very careful. Let me talk where I hear you, mm. but let me say this. I am not a frivolous man. I did spend some years practicing some type of law before I retired as a lawyer, so I'm well advised as to the possible legal liability of any word that I might use. So anything I'm saying, mm. take it as a given that before I would open my mouth to say so, I know as a fact that what I'm saying is the truth and I have absolute fact standing behind it. And because you have said so, let me explain myself. Over two years ago, I sat in this same studio and I announced to everyone that there was a murder plot over my life. And I then went on, this was after I had submitted petitions to the DSS and to the State Commissioner of Police. Up until today, in this state, in a country governed by law, nothing has been done. Some of those persons are the ones busy going around threatening people again today. I've been coming to your TV studio for a while. This is the first time in years since I've been coming here that I'll see armed soldiers required to protect what is supposed to be free press. So we're dealing with a situation where even though we might pretend that we are dealing with normalcy, there is nothing normal about our situation. If the people are allowed to vote in a free and fair election, these people are over. That's the truth. They have no record to place before the people. Only intimidation, blackmail, ethnic division, religious division, all sorts of divisions in order to keep the people from seeing the truth of what they should be facing. Was it the Igbos that have been digging up roads in Lagos State over the last 24 years? Has the Igbos been the one that have stopped the rail that has taken seven kilometers or there about that has taken 16 years to construct? Was it in the Igbo that has stopped that? Who is the person who is busy selling all of Lagos to people that is now shouting about Indigo, Indigo? There is just a validation of hatred in order to divide the people's attention so that they might not face the issue. The real issues are about a collapsing state, a collapsing country. They might want to forget all of well, that and let, distract let me, our let attention. Just, um, let me just interrupt you briefly. You, earlier, you talked about criminal gangs, you know, yeah, being given free hand to run. Yes. And of course, we've seen all sorts of posts and videos of, on social media that could be characterized that, as hate speech. But, you know, sadly, nobody has been arrested. Nobody has been prosecuted. So I'm wondering, is it that there are no laws against such, or is it that the laws are not being implemented? If the laws are not being implemented, how do we enforce that? David Dogwe, I have um, I've been shouting for years. It's pretty much the same seat, talking about the fact that we are not a country governed by law, and that we are a country governed by impunity, that our Policemen pretend to uphold the law, but they know that they dare not uphold the laws. If they tried it, their political masters will end up in prison cells. So what you end up having is the administration of impunity, and that is what governs Nigeria. So these people you call criminal gangs, that I will also call criminal gangs, they are not really criminal gangs in the classic sense. They are part and parcel of the governance process of legal state and practically the whole of Nigeria. Because you were there, people saw pictures. There, right there, in broad daylight, policemen standing, the evidence of the state. In Yoruba language, we call policemen olokpa. Olokpa actually emanates from the person who carries the staff of office, the upper staff of office, is insignia and authority. So, in, Yor in the Yoruba's mind, the olokpa is the symbol and representation of the state. You saw policemen in, at multiple locations standing aside while thugs quote and unquote, we call them talks, but they are not talks. These are stakeholders in the governance of the state. The BBC had a documentary where they had MC Mushroom Peking calling governor. That is what we are all pretending we do not see. And that is what they are hiding behind the hatred that they are staring up all over the place. So you and I will call them gangs because that tickles our fancy and it helps us to deodorize those who wear bow ties, wear suit, wear a bad ass, sit down in your studio and speak Dogon to Renchi to cover up for those who are carrying guns and are threatening everybody else's peace.
The reality is that they are not criminal gang in the true sense of it. They are part and parcel of the governance of Lagos State and have been for the last 24 years. So if we say we are a state or maybe a country governed by impunity, how then do we change this narrative? You said you've been here several <laughs> times talking about the same issue. So that in case for you not to come back in no, a few months' time talking about this, no what worry. then would you say is the way forward? There is no danger of me coming back in a few months' time to say this. And I'll tell you why. Ultimately, if people get the kind of government they deserve, the Nigerian people can blame Tinubu, they can blame Abiola, Abiola Obasan Job, blame this, blame that. Ultimately, they bear the responsibility for the governance of their country. When you find people who knows the truth, but finds a basis to justify their hatred, which blinds them from what they should see, they are telling you all of a sudden that a person born of a Yoruba parent to an Igbo mother is no longer a Yoruba. They are justifying hatred. These same people were so progressive in their thinking that they were the first to start, to start appointing Igbo commissioners. There is, an, there is somebody from Kanu in, in Lagos. They go, so they are progressive when they need to be. But when it serves their purposes to demonize in order to divide, they remember very quickly, all of a sudden, is no lo look at the end of the day they want us to have these asinine debates debating nonsense when we should be facing issues the issues are how is it impossible in a state that is more or less underwater that the whole of lekki peninsula does not have a square inch of pipe bone water after 24 years of the genius of body law? how is it that in lagos state we still do not have a coherent education system and nobody who can afford it will send his child to a government school. And that is when the government school is even available. You have less than three out of 10 classroom spaces in Lagos State owned by the state. And how good are those schools? Those are the questions we should be asking, but they will prefer that we are not asking those questions. They will prefer that we are talking about his Baba is Igbo, his mother is this, his high pub, is that nonsense. Those are the distractions, and it is up to the people to either allow themselves to switch on their brains and decide what is in their own enlightened, selfish interest, or they continue to allow their enemies to point at their, enemy, to, at their enemies for them. I have made up my, that, my own mind. When all this is over, Nigerians will live with the consequences of their choices, because at the end of the day, even where they did not choose, such as last, the last election, where we chose across the country in overwhelming numbers, they have started applying tribal and ethnic sentiments in order to divide what was a nationwide co coercive mandate and divide it to portray it as an ethnic agenda. And Nigerians are the ones who are receiving it in spite of what they know. So it's really, you can, if you set yourself on fire, the blind still wouldn't see. So what's the point? I hate to say this, but they say when the Agama fell from on top of the Iroko tree, it beat his head. He said, yes, I have tried. It shall be said that I did my best, so don't worry. It's unlikely you'll find me in your studio. <laughs> I'll go and take care of my wife and my children and face my own business. I've tried my best. It will be up to Nigerians to decide their own future. Well, just before you retire, we're still going to ask you a few more questions. Please. And I would like to um, make use of your legal knowledge. Now, ah. for those that have fallen victim of this ethnic tension, for instance, we've heard of um, shops of Igbo traders being burnt. We've heard that some people have been threatened physically not to dare come out and vote on election day if they're not voting for a particular candidate or a particular party and so on. So can this set of people maybe sue for compensation? And if they do, who would be held liable? Let me talk where we ask these questions about a society that is far from ideal. I practice but law. But surely there must be somewhere we can run to. People say oh, the yeah. judiciary is the last hope of the common man. The judiciary is the last hope of the common man. An often repeated quotation. But the unfortunate reality of the Nigerian is that our judiciary is not the last refuge of anybody but the rich. The poor will get judgment. The rich will get justice. If, if something that, see, I rarely talk about my own issues. I speak to national issues, but I was grievously wounded in my private space 
by the powers that be in this state. And I went to court. You know, they tell you, go to court. Just like you are counseling what they might be able to do, these people who are aggrieved. I went to court. Three years after, I'm still in court. My case hasn't been called for one day like this in this court. So when you live in a country where people obl obliquely, they talk about, there, there, is a, there, there, was a, there was an SAN, because I don't want to steer, ruffle too many feathers. So this SAN was the governor of a state. And it became a mantra that when they gave you certain dates, if you are prosecuting certain cases against the state or persons who have influence in this particular state in question, the judges will give you dates when the judges were already aware that they will not be sitting when they were on assignment elsewhere. So they started calling those dates by the SAN's name. So let's imagine that the person's name is Dele. So they started calling it Dele's dates. So you knew when you were handling such cases that both the registrar of the court and the judge, they both knew, they knew from day one what dates in the court register the court will not be sitting. But those are the dates we are going to be getting in those cases. So seven years down the line, if I was paying a lawyer three years after my case had not been called, wouldn't I be frustrated and walk away? That is the lot of the Nigerian. There is a place, they will trumpet, they will tell you that they built the free trade zone, they are going to bring airport. Those are people's ancestral homes. They are sources of livelihood. Lagos State government grabbed it. We've been in court on behalf of some villages, 140 villages in the Ekbe Axis. We've been in court for probably like the last five years. One adjournment after the other. So they will always tell you, go to court, because they know they are waiting for you in the court. That's the unfortunate reality. So really, the only recourse for the Nigerian would be a readiness to assert their citizenship. It will be up to them to find ways to do that. Because when you say assert their citizenship, what do you I have mean? never hidden the fact of where I stand. Our governance system does not flow from our free will. It flows from a military imperative, and that is Decree 24 of 1999. If that document had flown directly from our own will, if it was an expression of our sovereign will, the first president that served using that constitution would have respected our will and understood that it gained power by virtue of our will. <laughs> but because they had never respected our will, it has always been up to them to decide what to do at any point in time because they are not bound by the law. So we are in a situation where the Nigerian people would have to, on their own, determine what is in their best interest. And then, me, as far as I'm concerned, the only way to change this system is by a revolution. The only thing I will not sanction is violence. But I believe that we are getting to a point where this system is demanding a head-on confrontation because if I cannot go to court to find justice, Surely, I must find justice somewhere. If that means I'm chaining myself to a bridge to demand that you are either going to... That is, these are just... Is, uh, the only thing is no violence. No, I disavow violence. I mean, when, when you talk about a revolution, what comes to mind? I think we it had will be violence, a, a mini... <laughs> Let me tell you. No, don't worry. No, I think we had a mini preface no, no, of that with the NSAS. No, no, no. And no, of no, course, no. we remember was, what happened no, no, at the Lekki Tolgis. Yes, Questions I, still unanswered no, years worry, after. No, there is a need to clarify something. There is a danger that happens in Nigeria fairly regularly. Words come to Nigeria and they acquire new meaning in Nigeria because we infuse it with our own peculiar circumstances. The word revolution comes from a French word, revolver. What does it mean? It means to turn around. It simply means turn around. The way we are going, our trajectories, is not suggestive of sustainability. It should be clear to anyone who is looking at our situation that you can't sustain this. Whoever becomes the president of Nigeria on May 20, whatever it is, May would have to contend with 77 trillions in debt. That person would have to contend with the fact that you have massive youth unemployment, would have to contend with broken systems. That person cannot also have a crisis of legitimacy. That is the first one. Beyond that, whoever that person is, the person would, of course, have to have to dialogue with the Nigerian people because there are a lot of hardships waiting in front. You can't lead people by force. You need to have their consensus. So where we are going, revolutions are not, it does not necessarily mean violence. The only reason it came to be associated with violence in Nigeria particularly was that each time the military jumped into our processes, they named themselves revolutionary councils. 
And yet, the, the only thing revolutionary about them was their capacity for stealing. There was nothing revolutionary about our lives. They called themselves Revolutionary Council, and it happened all over Africa. Each time one military bandit grabbed power, he would name himself Revolutionary this, Revolutionary that. So they demonized the word. Revolution simply means turn around. What we had on the 25th of February, that they are trying to destroy, was a revolution, no less. People, the disinherited of Nigeria across the length and breadth of Nigeria, not just Igbo, not just Igbo, the disinherited in southern Kaduna, the victims of Nigeria in Kankara, wherever the victims of Nigeria were, they found commonalities, and they expressed their sovereign will. INEC advertised a procedure and process, and it has observed it only in breach. So when you are faced with this, you then begin to ask yourself, and then the thief tells you blithely, go to court. Well, talking about the revolution, we are going to have another chance you know, oh, for please. that this Anytime. Saturday. But of course, I've heard so many people say they are not going to vote because they are afraid that the thugs <laughs> will be out again. And like you have said, the police do. I, I, I guess their hands are tied. They can't really intervene if such happens. So what, um, what advice would you give to voters that are skeptical to come out this Saturday, probably because of electoral violence, voter suppression, and the likes? What advice would you Look, have for them? Freedom is a choice. Freedom is completely a choice. It is up to the individual to decide whether they want to leave or whether they want to exist. I would rather die standing up for what I believe to be the truth than to live to a ripe old age devoid of the capacity to speak the truth. Now, having spoken the truth, you must go beyond that. What is the effect of abandoning the electoral process this Saturday? I'll speak directly to the camera and tell you. All you will be doing is that you will be validating your own enslavement because at the end of the day, the entire purpose of them going around to bond markets, the entire purpose of them bringing all this ethnic hatred, the entire purpose of them attacking you and issuing threats is to keep you away from exercising the poll they had once told you was useless. Because you've now discovered that your vote is not useless, they are afraid that if you come out to exercise your franchise, they are feeding trough, they are, cook, they are pot of soup, they are going to break it. But without breaking that pot of soup, how do you free yourself? God forbid that the INEC, INEC select president is sworn in. But imagine that that man is ensconced in Abuja and Lagos is still in their pocket. What's going to happen to all of us? With criminal gangs already legalized in Lagos State, we might as well give up and Kukuma know that all of us should go and join mushroom picking in his park. Because that's the reality. That is the alternative to you electing to sit. I'm not even saying vote for any particular candidate. But you need to get up, get out of your homes, understand what is at stake. Is your very freedom. Go and vote. Okay. It's been a very enlightening discussion. I'd, I really don't even know what to say after what you have just said. So I'm just going to say thank you so much, Mr. Dele Faritimi, lawyer and activist, for coming on Newsday. And uh, we wish Ni Lagosians and Nigerians all the best we'll this coming best. Saturday. Thank, thank you, you so much, much for joining us. Thank you.